Welcome to this class on aspects about technology. This is the second class within this part of the program which is uh, dedicated to the technical analysis. So last time we have dealt with general considerations, scope and extent of technical analysis. Today we will start deepening the main elements of the technical analysis. Technology is one of it. Let's have a look at the outline together. We will start with the concept of technology. We will deal with the choice and influencing factors. And lately, we will deal with the guidelines for the selection process. So, just to recall some ideas from the previous class, we have to deal with the technical analysis since we have different alternatives. And since we have different alternatives, we, we should set up a process for choosing among different alternatives as well as we should draw some guidelines driving this selection process. Let's start with the concept of technology. The concept of technology is um, very heterogeneous and very variegated in the economic, in the technological and in the social um, sciences. We could consider a general definition saying technology is the embodiment of knowledge concerning the method of design, producing and delivering a good or a service. So just to clear up the, the field, technology is considered as the embodiment of knowledge. Knowledge is know-how, it's knowing how to do things. It's not just general notions, it's notions that could be translated into actions. This knowledge is not general, it's specific about methods of designing, producing and delivering. So, we do not consider just manufacturing, uh, we consider the whole value chain and the supply chain underlying a specific, a specific um, business. And it's both about goods, physical goods and services. Starting from this general definition, we might deal with different possible classifications of technology. So, technology could be defined as patented or unpatented, considering the fact that the body of knowledge which is embodied in specific entities could be defended by a patent or could be free and accessible by other by other actors. So it's about the application of scientific knowledge. It's about applications of practical knowledge or know-how. It's about abilities and uh, skills. Once we have defined technology and the relation with, with knowledge and the possible embodiment, we could consider the entities which are embodying the technology itself. So, once we have defined technology, we should rely on the fact that it's embedded in artifacts that can be utilized for development of product or service or for a production or a delivery system. So, again, the knowledge that we're taking in consideration is embodied in something that we call artifacts, which are conceptual entities. And um, these artifacts could be related to a specific products or services, good physical goods or services, as well as to the production schemes that we employ for uh, realizing, manufacturing, assembling, or delivering such uh, products and services. So, to be specific, technology could be considered in terms of forms, actual forms that you could assume, and costs. When it comes to the embeddedness of technology, technology could be embedded in production methods, 
production process, machinery and equipment, product and marketing and commerce. So again, as you can see, we have some aspects related to the uh, physical manufacturing or the physical delivering of a, of a service, as well as we have the idea of product that we have recalled already since uh, we have dealt with the marketing strategy and marketing and commerce. So it's the final phase of reaching the, the target markets. When it comes to costs, uh, costs could be related to the property rights if considered the patents, for example, or the royalties for uh, adopting a specific technology, and could be referred to the special adaptation. So when it comes to special adaptation, we could recall that we might have a generic technology, and when we try to embody this generic technology into a specific artifact, let's say a production method or um, a physical good, sometimes some adaptations are necessary. Since adaptation is expensive, we might have costs related to adaptation. The same kind of adaptation could take place when we deliver the same products in different geographic areas and the final products that will be deliver, delivered need to be adapted to the local context. So the same raw technology could be refined in different ways considering different products in different markets. All these refinement activities are expensive and that's why we have the special adaptation costs within the general um, consideration related to technology. When it comes to production methods as an artifact, um, these, product, these methods are operation for converting production factors to goods or services. So, um, it's the conversion of inputs into outputs that define a method. So, in order to have some examples, we might have metal machining, die casting, or wire extrusion. These are the basic methods for uh, obtaining uh, specific products to manufacturing processes. When it comes to production process, it's a little bit more sophisticated idea. It's uh, about integrated system of unit operations, so it's a system and it's integrated, for converting resources to intermediate or consumer goods or services. So everything that we need in terms of operations for converting raw materials and other inputs into physical goods or services could be named as a production process. It's the artifact, again, which is embodying a specific technology. So consistently with what we've seen with the, with the methods, let's, let's deal with some, some examples. We might have smelting of non-ferrous metals, petrochemical uh, production, and Portland cement uh, production. So we, 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 we switched from the methods, the general approach to a conversion or to a transformation, to the integrated systems which are able to transform these inputs into outputs. Product, embodiment of a physical or intellectual concept in a good or service. So again, if we consider the product as, a, as an artifact, and we recall that technology is defined as the knowledge embodied in an artifact, Technolo the, the relation between technology and the product is the embodiment of a physical or intellectual concept. So it's the inclusion, it's the formula, it's the recipe, it's the way by which 
physically materials are transformed into a product that ex explains the relation between technology and such an artifact. Again, some examples, cellular telephone, which are embodying a bunch of different sub-technologies, and those technologies are obtained by integrated systems and by the choice of a specific method. Bicycle derailing mechanism is another, is another technology embodied in a, in a product. Automatic bank teller services. So, again, we have physical products or service, and then we have a supporting technology embodied in such products, goods or services. When it comes to machinery and equipment, it's the embodiment of a physical intellectual concept in a production device or machine. So, also, machinery, equipments, and other physical devices which are able to transform inputs into outputs, materials and other services into physical goods or services, it could be an artifact, and then could embody a physical or intellectual concept. For example, we have the numerical milling machine, the industrial robot, and the tire molds. So again, we have a way in which a body of knowledge is embedded and embodied in, into physical, physical devices. Marketing and commerce, methods for assessing markets and distribution of goods and services. So, if we recall the idea that we have dealt with during the marketing strategy module, and if we recall that we named the distribution as the bridge between producer and consumer, between the company and its markets, it's quite understandable at this point that even the channels, even the, the, the solutions that we choose for connecting the company with its market could embed some technology. And as we uh, explored already in terms of distribution, we might have different alternatives and these alternatives could embody different kind of know knowledge. So, even in this, in this case, we might have different alternatives. Telemarketing, so we're trying to sell our products through um, the use of the telephone, which means that by communicating with the, the potential buyer, we try to convince the buyer to, uh, to buy our products. Electronic commerce through the use of the internet mass marketing of consumer goods. So even the distribution channels related to the mass markets for consumer goods, food for example, could embody a specific technology. So since technology can be embodied in different artifacts, um, it's possible to talk about technology packages. So a technology package is a combination of intellectual property, patents, know-how, information, embodied into something physical, so physical devices and systems, engineering, designs and standards. So a package is a combination of tangible and intangible assets. It's a combination of tangible and intangible elements. The idea of technological package recalls the idea of business concept, which, as we might recall, is made of physical goods and services. A car is about manufacturing and after sales services, as we've seen, as well as some services, like restaurants, are made of intangible assets 
but uh, they are based on physical goods as well, like the food. So the technological package, as well as the business package or the business idea, is made of both tangible and intangible aspects. And technology could be embodied both in physical or intangible elements. So this is for the relation between the body of knowledge and the uh, artifacts. This is the definition of technology and its, uh, its manifestations in real life. The other element that we're dealing with when we face the problem of technological choices is um, specific, the choice of, it, of technology and the influencing factors. As in many fields that we explore so far, we might have internal and external forces driving the choices of a company, driving the choices related to a project. So we might have the major internal factors influencing technology choice, product design and quality. So, um, when it comes to uh, the product specification, as we've seen, the design of the, of the product itself and its quality standards are crucial for the definition of technology. So, for example, in the garment industry, um, a, a handmade suit or an industrially uh, produced uh, suit are different in terms of quality. So, the artifact which is embodied in technology has different exigencies and requirements considering the different expected level of quality uh, by, the, by the buyers. Production scale and plant capacity. As we will see in the next classes, the production scale, which is the quantity, the volume that we might produce in a, in a certain um, time span, is crucial for the choice of the specific technology itself. So again, we must switch from mass production to individual production considering the scale that we're facing as well. It's so not just the product design, it's also the scale and the plant capacity that we have engineered in our, in our technical analysis. Raw materials, properties, and price. So, the level in terms of quality of raw materials and the, the, con the price conditions we might exploit are crucial for defining the kind of technology we're, we're employing. So, for example, um, expensive raw materials might need more accurate technologies in order to produce more reliable and high, high quality uh, goods. Whereas, if I'm exposed to low price raw materials, some inaccuracy in the, in the manufacturing process or some wastes or discarded materials uh, could be tolerated. Consumption of scarce resources. So, uh, resources are scarce by definition. Uh, some resources are more scarce than others. So, the choice of technology should rely also on the priority that the company gives to the utilization of some, of some resources. So, by intuition, technology should maximize the exploitation of the resource which is the, scar the, the most scarce one in the, in, the company, uh, in the company asset portfolio. Labor versus capital uh, costs. Different technologies could imply different levels of labor absorption or capital absorption. Now, considering what is the, the, the element which is less costly for the company, being capital or labor, the choice of technology, specific technology could be influenced also by um, this element. Meaning that, for example, if labor cost is very cheap, probably the company is encouraged to adopt a labor-intensive solution. If uh, labor cost is high and capital cost is low, 
probably, considering the same range of activities to be deployed, the company could opt for a, um, a high intensive, uh, a high technological intensive uh, solution. Then we have some reliability um, considerations uh, related to the how, again, reliable we want our products to be, our artifacts uh, to be. Then we have the part load performance, meaning that, as we will see in the next classes, if we have a plan and this, this plan is not exploited at its, at its maximum capacity or close uh, to its maximum capacity, the part load performance could in influence the evaluation of technology as well. The cost of technology itself. Cost of technology could be considered as a spot cost, meaning the price of technology or the cost related to the installation of technology. But what we should consider uh, as well is the cost of maintenance of of technology. And then we have the capacity to absorb technology. Uh, now, the organizational capacity of absorbing technology is related to the, 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 the game, the combination of the internal forces driving the choice of technology itself. So, for example, if we have a high energy consumption in terms of technology and we operate in an area which is um, uh, lacking of energy supplies, then the capacity of a sub technology is low. The same with trained and uh, skilled workforces and things like that. Then we might have some environmental impact and, um, and mitigation, which means that if we consider the impact of external factors upon the internal factors that we explore so far, um, the environment, considering all the actors and conditions surrounding the company, could boost or constrain the adoption of specific technology. Sustainability under local conditions, both from a strategic point of view, a competitive point of view, and uh, an ecological point of view, as we will see. And as we have recalled many times, the availability of infrastructures, both physical, IT related and human infrastructures. Again, if we keep on looking outside the company to the environmental um, elements, we might consider the long term trends in related subsectors. So, related subsectors sub could be related to the um, industry where our raw materials are produced and obtained and if we see specific trend like contraction in such sub industry then the choice the specific the, the exact choice we make about our technology could be biased by these observations similarly considering the fact that the company is operating in a social environment in a community the pressure and the priorities of the local authorities is crucial for the adoption of specific technology. So, for example, the adoption of a new technology could be encouraged or constrained by the fact that this technology is compliant with the local standards in terms of eco-sustainability, for example. Economic benefits uh, versus uh, cost. Um, the al technological alternatives are made uh, of elements that can both enhance our benefits and rise our costs as well. So for each specific technology, we have benefits on one hand, costs on the other hand. So we have to accept the fact that, as in many other aspects of organization, there is no one best way, so one best alternative, but we should be able to uh, compensate and find an equilibrium among all these trade-offs between costs and, and benefits. All these considerations lead to the formulation of specific guidelines for the selection process. 
So we've seen the definition of technology, we've seen the artifacts embed, embedded in technology, we have just seen the factors, both internal and external, which are influencing such technology. So let's try to conclude with, um, by drawing some uh, conclusions uh, on the guidelines for the, for the selection process. So in very practical terms, practical guidelines for technology selection could start with this, uh, this element, review process flow charts, which means that, as we will see in next classes, all the process could be um, pictured via um, flow charts. The revision of such flow charts is important in order to assess the, the impact of the different technological alternatives. Second, favor less operational complexity. So, sometimes complexity could be very intriguing, could be very elegant. If we combine different subsystems and the integration among the systems seem to be functional to our exigencies, we should consider that complexity generates a cost for the organization in terms of coordinating activities, coordinating personnel, training specific personnel for specific sub-activities or for some links, activating some links within these subsystems and so on. So, the higher the complexity, the higher the potential cost uh, related to the, to the management of the process. So, in, the, in choosing between two technologies, two alternatives, um, the company should favor, given the other aspects, conditional to the other aspects, um, the solution which is less uh, complex and eventually less costly for, for the company itself and for the project that we're dealing with. Further, the, pro the quali product quality consistent with the market. Sometimes technology could help our company obtain high quality products, but if this high quality is not consistent with the market expectations, is not consistent with the marketing strategy, is not consistent with the uh, standards of quality that my uh, buyers are used to, my consumers are used to, then um, it could be risky for the company to invest in a very advanced technologies if the, the artifacts, the products that we're, we're going to obtain are not consistent with the market expectations. So, this is very important since sometimes the most advanced technologies are more attractive for companies, but it's not said that um, their impact on the product could guarantee a competitive advantage to the company itself. Long-term service and spare parts availability. As we were recalling, both during the marketing um, strategy and during the first part of this technical analysis investigation, the availability of additional services and spare parts is crucial for choosing technology, since the scarcity of such um, services and, and parts could be a very um, dangerous, could be very detrimental for the the investment, uh, the investment itself, for the production itself. Major suppliers and related experience. So it's not just about the availability of spare parts and, and services, but it's also the experience of the, 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 the major suppliers. So if you consider an investment spanning for uh, in a range of time of 20 years, we should consider the existence and experience of our suppliers in the next 20 years as well. Identity and qualifications of technical personnel. So, this is another uh, known idea. On one hand, we have technology. On the other hand, we have human resources. Human resources should represent the human capital which is consistent with technological capital, which means that in the short, in the medium and in the long range, we should 
guarantee the fact that our personnel is skilled, trained and um, educated to the state of the art for using the related technology. So the identity of qualification and qualifications of our technical personnel is crucial for choosing the proper technology. Sometimes companies are attracted by the most advanced technology without considering in a proper way the um, necessary requirements in terms of skills and competencies uh, of the person, the technical personnel itself. Another important element is about the choice between design or performance specifications. Now, technology is a body of knowledge embodied in artifacts. This is the definition we started from. Now, the embodiment could be related to the design of the technology and the artifacts or the performance of the artifact itself. So if we consider that companies might have different strategies and these different strategies could lead to different considerations in terms of uh, characteristics of the products or characteristics to the process by which the products are obtained, then it's pretty clear that according to the standards that we recognize that we, we, we assign to our products in terms of uh, value proposition, we should show, choose the technology accordingly, meaning that uh, if, we, if, we, if we are targeting a segment of the market where we have very skilled uh, buyers and very skilled consumers as well related to the product, we should adopt a current technology which is able to deliver this uh, value uh, items uh, to, to our final final consumers, to our fi final customers. Another element is related to the uh, minimization of net cost of acquisition and use. Now, what does minimize net cost of acquisition and use mean? Uh, and what is the net cost? The price of a product or, or a technology is the cost for the buyer. The cost for the buyer could be higher than the, 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 the actual uh, price when we charge our buyer with additional uh, expenses like time, um, information retrieval and so on. So what is the net cost of acquisition and use from the buyer's uh, perspective? It's the fact that technology is available, is reliable, and we do not have to add additional costs or unexpected or hidden costs to the ones that we have figured out as a price. Consider benefits and cost of obsolete technology. So technology, by definition, is something evolving. So since it's a body of knowledge embodied in, in, um, in artifacts, and knowledge is something which is dynamic, changes over time, people are learning, developing new concepts, developing new ideas, and so accordingly, the artifacts embodying such bunch of uh, cognitive elements are dynamic as well. Obsolence is the phenomenon by the which a previous technology is considered old or almost useless because a new technology is taking advantage. So it has nothing to do with the physical utilization of the device, it has just to do with the state of the art of the knowledge. If there is a new knowledge embodied in new artifacts, then our device, our machineries, our process could be uh, obsolete by the fact that there is a new, a new technology fulfilling the same need in a different way. An obsolete technology is costly because it's basically a sunk cost for the organization. So a cost that could not be converted otherwise. One way that company 
the companies have for tackling this, this, this phenomenon is the fact that since the different international markets could be exposed to different needs, could be exposed to different states of the art, sometimes it's possible to convert a production uh, and to move a production from one area to the other just because the second area represents a less developed uh, country whereas the products of a previous technology could be still considered feasible and useful by, by the buyers. So all over the world the same company if it's exposed to the obsolescence of technology could move this technology, could locate, the, the re relocate this technology in a different area. So the cost could be a sunk cost if the artifact is not reusable in any kind or could be lower and related just to the, uh, the moving of from one side to the other if the technology could still be um, utilized in a different environment. Analyze costs a basis for technology um, selection. So uh, technology often comes with uh, investments by company. Investments have the characteristic to be um, asymmetric in terms of time, which means that at time zero, at the beginning, we have a certain price to be paid, a certain amount, a certain cash out, and then we have to kind of recover this, this, this investment through the mortgage. So when it comes to analyzed costs, we have amount and timing of technology acquisition and absorption costs. So these are the costs for the installation of the, uh, of the capacity. These are the costs for the acquisition and the installation of the plant, for example. And then we have the investment costs for plant and equipment. So it's not just the initial investment, it's the completion of the investment uh, itself. So plant functioning and equipment. And then we have the operating costs. The operating costs are the day-by-day -day costs related to the day-by-day -day consumption of resources. Human resources, utilities, raw materials, and, and so on. The last element that we should take in consideration for drawing guidelines about uh, technology selections is related to technology life of equipment. So uh, the technological life is the combination of both um, physical erosion, physical consumption, and obsolescence. So if my um, machinery is exposed to risk to get obsolescence in three years, despite its physical life is 20 years, that means that in, in, in the decision of the technology itself, we should be aware of the risk of the obsolescence that could be higher of the risk of physical uh, dismantling of the, of the machinery or physical consumption of the machinery itself. All those costs should be scaled in an annual um, in an annual schedule. So at the end, the guidelines should be able to um, enact the decision based on annual costs rather than on uh, total, total cost of investment. That's everything for this class. We will, deep, uh, we, we will deepen uh, related aspects in the next classes. You can find, as usual, further information and details on our website. Thank you.